Okay, weird rule alert. This is Thor's Anvil by Philip Newman, which I believe will be posted on February 7th, 2024. I'm getting to this a little bit ahead of time, thank goodness. This is a bit of an interesting one. So we are not using normal Sudoku rules this time. Instead, we're only placing digits in the white cells and we're ignoring the gray cells. And we're just using the digits one through six. And so we're ha gonna have in the white cells in each row and each column and each region, the digits one through six once each. So for instance, in these six white cells, we have one through six once each. In these six white cells, we have one through six once each and same for these six white cells. And on top of that, it's just going to be normal Sudoku. It's very similar, I think, to Bill's extra space puzzle, which used the digits one through nine in, if I'm not mistaken, a 16 by 16 grid, which was kind of one of those infamous gas puzzles. But Philip has done something a lot gentler um, and has given us the digits one through six in a nine by nine puzzle. So let's have a look. So I'm looking just like I would in a classic Sudoku for kind of duplicated digits, hi cat, um, <laughs> that might give me hidden digits in rows in, in rows, columns or regions. And I'm seeing like duplicated fives here, which are not giving me much. Duplicated ones, threes maybe. Um, I know there has to be a three somewhere in there. No. Okay, so here I, I've seen something now. And by the way, this is a genuine blind solve and like a lot of my walkthroughs um, on this channel. So what I have seen at this point is this five and six here. Tell me that five and six can't go into these two cells at all, right? So these two cells, I don't know what order they're in, but they have to be five and six. And so I still need to place a one and a three in the region. Hello. Hello, darling. And they're going to have to go there and there. Next question, do I have anything symmetrical to that? No, because if it was symmetrical, that one and five would have the same behavior. But in fact, because there's already a one here, I don't get the chance to make the symmetrical deduction. So let's keep kind of pushing with what we've already figured out. So I did just place this five and six. So I know that these digits have to be one, two, three, and four, right? So these two can't be two and three. So I have to place both my two and my three here and here. And because I have this three, I know what order those go in. These two digits would have to be one, four to finish the column. Now, hello, please stop. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to re-record this without the cat or if I'm just going to assume that you guys will enjoy that. She is, um, she's mad because my spouse is on a business trip and my spouse pays a lot of attention to her. Um, and she's feeling neglected, even though she is in no way neglected. So that's a five, six pair to finish out the region. So now here I have to place two, three, and four. That's not going to be a three. So what else can I do here? I need four, five, and six in this column. That doesn't really reveal anything, so I'm going to leave that unmarked for now. I need one, five, and six in this column, and there's only one place in the column for a one. And then that will have to be either a five or a six. Cool. I notice now I just placed a pencil mark in this row and this row is actually pretty restricted. I can't put a five or a six here or a one, three, four because of the row. So that will have to be our two. Our five and six go in these two positions and there's a five here. So that's a six now and that's a five. That makes this a four, six pair, which resolves my five and six there. So now I need to place a two and a four in these cells. I don't know which way around those go, but I do notice this two, four pair that I have here now. And I also, while I'm looking at that column, see this one, one situation where now the only position where I can put one in column eight is here. And that's gonna be helpful eventually. These will have to be two, three, and four. So this has to be a four because there's a two and a three in the row. So that's a six, making the last digit in the row a one. So these are now two and three. This two gives us a three here. That's a two and that resolves our two, four pair. Now we need to place five and six in this column. We're gonna go that way around. So that's gonna be a two and then these will be four and five. These cells contain three and six. One of these will have to be a one in order to put a one in row seven. So that will have to be a one. That can't be a two. These are three, four, and five. So that's either four or five, that's three or five. And we probably don't need this to solve, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it just because I spotted it thanks to the four or five I just placed. That's a four or five pair now, which makes this a one and makes that a four. So this is now a six. 
Um, this four resolves the four five pair, so I see I probably did not need any of that. Um, I love it when I see something that's that's kind of cute that ends up to be totally unnecessary because it means I can share the cute thing with you guys without the guilt of like, well, it's not really totally fair to expect everybody to spot that kind of obscure cute thing. But anyways, with just a bit of classic Sudoku at the end, that's how we finish up Philip Newman's extra space Sudoku called Thor's Anvil. I really loved that one. I think that's a really nice presentation of extra space Sudoku. I, genu I genuinely like never thought myself of doing that variant in a smaller grid size than 16 by 16, and I think there's really something to it. I'd like to try setting one of these myself later. Thank you for watching, and have an awesome rest of your day!